We'll, we'll, we'll start to start off. Do you want to uh, just introduce yourself and a bit about who you are and a bit about Game Chuck? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Igor Kolar. Uh, I'm the, the game director for Speed Limit. I'm, I'm the co-founder of Game Chuck. Um, yeah. Uh, how <laughs> how do we go from there? Yeah. About, then? So we started technically in 2017. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Game Check as, a, as as one of the companies that started off like two years ago, so you could say that we 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 really kicked it up a notch in in like 2018. Because that was yeah. <laughs> for, for those who know, because I, I met you, I think it was was it Res? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Res. It was yeah, it was one of those. Whichever one of those was was sooner because we were in both of them. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, the first time I met you, you was. Um, I'm going to get to speed limit in a bit because that's, that's sure, sure. about this week. Yeah. Um, but before we get into how crazy and, and mental speed limit is, you've done crazy mental weird stuff long before that. Because I remember the the three D co- the three D printed coin for arcade machines. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to, do you want to tell okay. a little about that? Yeah, I mean, I can go. I can go for all the way from the start if you like, if you don't mind. That's that's yeah. Because cool, so. you, you had the comic book games as well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So we started off because because of my uh, co co-found, co-founder and partner Alex uh, did the uh, uh, point and click adventure games before. We already knew how to make those. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, those are both not particularly popular these days. They they were they might have been a little bit more like when we started, but largely largely that's a that's a niche market, right? Yeah. Uh, so. And and also it's, it takes a long time, right? It takes a long time to animate the characters. It takes a long time to do very fancy backgrounds and everything. Especially if it's pixel art, then there's no there's no like shortcuts to it. And so we figured we we just design a game that's that's designed to be small, right? And we chucked out everything that that just took time. So animations went, and we then we were like, well, it still has to be interesting, right? Like a game without animations can be extremely dull. Well, <laughs> comic books are don't have animations and are not dull, right? So, so we so did like a point and click adventure thing, game that is a is a comic book. And so every time you do an action in it, so that you normally do in a point and click adventure game, every time you want to go somewhere, every time you uh, pick something up, you talk to somebody, uh, all of those actions create another panel of a comic, and so those co- panels stack up, and once you're done, you have a whole comic book behind you. And then you can print it out as a paper book, like as a as a bound, bound uh, comic book. See, that's the thing I love. It will call adventure. I mean, a point and click comic book adventure. And then the big twist at the end is, oh, and then you get to print that out, and uh, you've got your own. You've just made your own comic book. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, you... it's not a. Yeah, yeah. It's, I should I should point out because because people kept kept uh, coming back to it. Uh, it's not. Uh, so it's a. And everybody who who have, whoever played a point and click adventure games knows. Uh, how much uh, they are and aren't linear, right? So the mm-hmm. story is basically the same, but you don't you don't go about doing all the things in the same order every time, right? You do eventually when you when you want to minimize the because we have like an achievement of how do you do it in, in the fewest amounts of panels and so on. But like it's not every time you play it, it's it's uh, every time you want to print it out, it's the way you played it exactly as you played it. Yeah, that's about says if you did something differently in a second yeah. player group, you'd have a second comic. And even though the game is like, takes I think it took people like half an hour at most. Maybe maybe some took took a bit longer if they just if they just missed something. We tried to make things uh, like things that you pick up because it's a yeah I should know that it's a it, it's inspired by newspaper comics. So one of the things that that went out along with the animations was color. So mm-hmm. the entire thing is done completely like the entire game is actually drawn on paper and inked on paper and then scanned and put into the game because we realized that. At one point, we were going to. I was going to just draw the draw it on paper and then ink it on uh, ink it in uh, like Illustrator or like mm-hmm. some uh, some graphics program. But then we realized that it's it's missing that that hand drawn feeling that uh, that comics have. And then we thought, well, sure, it's it's probably just a filter. We can like fake it. And then it turned out that it took much much longer to fake it than just <laughs> scan it, <laughs> scan it, <laughs> just put it in, remove the white of the paper, and use a use actually a, a scanned piece of paper that just lower the lower the brightness down to get it gray so it doesn't hurt the eyes. And, so it's yeah. a comic book that was yeah. scanned into computer to become yeah. a computer again. Yeah, it would then be printed out as a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> That, that's melting parts of my brain here. <laughs> so how was that? Like I said that that was just purely by accident. It was like it's, it's easier 
to just scan it than it is to try fake it, it and it looks better. Yeah, we tried we tried both of them. I mean, we tried several several methods uh, to see if like if we can do it. Uh, I, I say we, but this this is this was entirely mine. I was like my 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 issue because I was like, oh, I'm afraid it could be boring. It's like I think that we that like most of the most of like awards that we missed were because the game doesn't look as flashy. So we had to we had to go back and do like Vape Escape that it's in the, it's both in the black and white and color and it's digitally made. It's it's much smaller, but it was more of a technological like a tech demo than than anything like for us to to know how to make the next bigger one that still hasn't come out, but will probably this year. Because you've got you've got a couple of comic books. Oh, yeah. haven't you? These these comic book style games. How many have you got yes. in total? So right now, right now we have uh, All You Can Eat. That's the first one, mm-hmm. uh, and we have Vape Escape. That's the that's the second one. That's e- that's even shorter. And that one's free. That one was a uh, that was that one was a Humble Bundle original, mm-hmm. uh, and it's free on Steam. I think I don't know if it's on itch anymore. Uh, I- I'll find I should, the link. I should put it in the video. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so those are the only two two that, that were out. Then we got uh, then we got uh, funding and like support from the Ministry of Culture here locally to create more of them because this was I mean this still is a pretty unique thing. Like there were games that that have a, a comic book aesthetic, but aren't exactly comic books, right? Yeah. Uh, so we were we were able to get three other studios to uh, from that like incentive to uh, to make their own stories. Uh, their own stories that were either in their own universes for for games that they were already making. So that's the heist. Uh, it's sort of sort of a cyberpunk noir uh, story. There's a sidekick, which is a really a really a regular like uh, superhero like comic done by a, by a, by an artist that actually did. I think he he colored a, a Spider Man issue for for Marvel. Right. So like, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was that. <laughs> yeah. At, at that point, I was like, yeah, okay. I don't have to pretend I know how to draw anymore. That's that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one and the uh, Cosmonauts caretaker. Oh, Co- or or just Cosmonaut. I think uh, that was done by um uh, by um. Uh, I forgot uh, the, the, uh, our. The writer and programmer Dora did the did the text, and I forgot the name of the of the, of the artist. That's really really bad of me. I'll try to look it up, but it, yeah. yeah. So after the comic books, um, was yeah. that when the because the first time I met you, you gave me and I've been trying to find it, but it's in a box somewhere because I moved house, you know, just to begin a lockdown. Um, you gave me a like this little gold coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, we at some point we figured we figured that uh, making games wasn't difficult enough. So we no. also <laughs> too easy. <laughs> yeah, it's like it only it only took us like three. I mean, realistically, it only took us three months to do all you can eat, and it only took us a couple of weeks to do vape escape. Back then, we were we were too uh, naive to think that it would take us more than like four or five months to do a speed limit. <laughs> that was um, how many years yeah. ago? <laughs> two ish, <laughs> ish. <laughs> Like to be fair, to be fair, that's not the only things that we did. Like we did, we did several commissions uh, along the way, and, yeah. and like there were there were other there were other projects, and we did co- keep coming back to speed limit, but also to the arcade that I, that I'm trying to mention now. Yeah, um, so yeah, we we started off making our making an arcade cabinet, uh, which uh, obviously because this is what Game Check does, couldn't be like a regular. Yeah, yeah. Arcade cabinet, there's gonna be something right? weird and wonderful so, about it. It's game chuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't. It just. It just wouldn't be like our our product then, right? Um, so one of the like, except. Okay, let, let's 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 start from the beginning. Um, if you if you see it from a distance, you'll you'll recognize that it's an archetypical uh, arcade shape, right? It's a bar top arcade. Yeah. Uh, it's an it's a bar top arcade rather than a than a freestanding one because the machine that we bought and assembled uh, to make them, <laughs> to make them <laughs> can only can only fit by default uh, like uh, panels that are under a meter uh, meter square there, right mm-hmm. we can we can and eventually very likely we'll hack it to to accept like larger pieces and we will we will do a freestanding one but for the time being. Uh, it's much easier to, to yeah to to make a and and all the actually all the design problems that we we had and still have with it uh, with the bending of plastics and and things like that 
were, are actually the same for the freestanding one or and the and the bar top one. So once we finish the bar top one, it's it's not going to be, be much of a leap to just make a, make a bigger one, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like from a distance, you'll notice that it's that it's an arcade, and then when you know get get closer, you'll notice that we don't have any of the it's called T molding the plastic the plastic inserts that go into into the sides. Everything is actually sleek and uh, and uh, down flat. Uh, there are no uh, every well. <laughs> To, to put it simply, like everything that that could have been done easily wasn't, because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like it's it's very easy to to attach two pieces of, of, of like wood together or MDF fiberboard that we're yeah. actually using. It's it's generally it's generally easy, right? You can you can either do it directly or you can use some kind of uh, standoffs or uh, like L -pro metallic L profiles that you screw into one bit and then you screw into another and you can you yeah. connect it together, sure. But again, that would be too easy, and like you can get away. It's yeah, you can get. Yeah, why do it easy when you can do it hard? <laughs> you know, why do it easy when it could look good? Mm -hmm. Is is basically basically the problem, right? So we wanted everything to actually fit very nicely. You can get get away with a lot if you do the, the standard arcade thing, and then you can actually use then then you can, then you can use the T molding, and you ha you have like more room for error, right? Whereas this, you ha everything has to be down down to like a under a millimeter usually, um, so every everything would fit. Uh, things would be uh, watertight, so one of the one of the basic uh, basic premises for the for the arcade, like ba like basic features that we needed was uh, so there's a there's a glass pane between the, the screen and the player, uh, and the way we, that we asked the the glass company is uh, what could, what could survive a beer bottle? <laughs> nice, nice plumbing. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they were like, well. Well, we we suspect a six millimeter piece of laminated glass should probably do the trick. They, they weren't exactly sure because obviously this is a weird thing to ask. And we still have one extra one that doesn't fit the the, the latest design, so that one is definitely going to get tested on uh, <laughs> to to see if it actually can survive. How how do you test that? Is is that you hitting it with a beer bottle? Oh yeah, checking out in the field and like going, try smash this. Oh no no no! Oh, we're definitely no. We're definitely going to use the uh, uh, so the sides would survive obviously, but they're not going to they're not going to be painted because that's ironically that that turned out to be the most expensive part of the whole thing because uh, usually arcades have uh, st just giant stickers on them, uh, and we wanted to do this uh, like piano black finish that that you can actually see yourself in right. Uh, this this still mean this this is still like subject to change because we're still looking for something that's even more durable because it looks really nice like it, it looks really nice it won't rub off if you if you like you, it, yeah. uh, no if you if you knock it if you just use it regularly everything that's uh, everything that like all the surface controls are are either plastic mm -hmm. so it you don't you don't necessarily even touch the the parts that are painted uh, but still like we nicked we nicked it a few times when we were transporting and it was like well, maybe something else would survive this a little better, right? Mm -hmm. So we're we're still looking for for something that's even better because uh, my idea is to you know if if old arcade arcade machines survived like for twenty years or more, like this one should as well. And yeah, that's yeah. so. And that that actually goes in, goes back into um, we don't use any proprietary hardware inside except for our uh, for our board that controls the the, the buttons and the joystick. But that one is still more open than anything that we found uh, uh, online, and we and we intend to keep it open, right? Yeah, oh, that was cool. So they are based on a, on chips that are that go into Arduino's. Uh, so you should be able to like, if if you really want to, you should be able to uh, like work on them. When there's no there's no glob topping or anything. They're just they're they're all exposed, and we had to do it. We had to do this that bit ourselves because. We at some point we encountered uh, a control board that could that you can just get off get uh, get like online and people people use them for their own for their own joysticks and for their own arcades, but it ended up being that uh, they don't uh, like two of them that were identical like the hardware looked identical to us when, when we bought them had completely different firmware we couldn't change it we couldn't flash it we couldn't do anything to it uh, and. And, and that's that's not necessarily the problem. The problem was that it didn't work the same. 
Ah, so, so you've got two machines that don't work the same way. Yeah. yeah. So you've yeah, I mean, if you're going to make these, you want them to like be repeat, like manufactured, that they're all the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so th- at, at that point, we realized, oh yeah, so we can't re- like we could order like a hundred or a thousand of them in advance, but this was never going to be a mass-produced product, right? This was going to be like if we if we sell a hundred of them, we'd be incredibly happy. Like it would it would like bring back all the investment we put into it, and like it would mean there are a hundred of our arcades somewhere somewhere in the world right that's Mm -hmm. that that'd be great uh but like we couldn't we can't afford to like order a hundred of them in advance and even then we would end we would still end up having to do a lot of things ourselves like the uh, each button on the arcade has a small light ring around it and uh, those light rings correspond to things in the games and on the arcade so they light up according to things well at least to our games right like if there's a cooldown factor to a to let's say in speed limits to to a gunshot, then it would uh, slowly tick down. Like it would it would turn off when it when it, when you spend your shot. Yeah. Then it would slowly tick back on mm-hmm. with like un, when it's until it's ready and like and it would correspond to the color in the in the game, for example, right? Um, so all of those, all of those things, the light behind the marquee, uh, the the controls that that feature up to even to. That, that you can actually use with more controls than we're going to use with our arcade. So that's why that like we're trying to, to see if it can be a standalone product as well. So you can you can control up to four joysticks. Uh, actually, I think it's eight now because we changed something and uh, we we needed to add we needed to add analog support as well, uh, which is our original arcade won't have. Uh, but you, so you can have like a four at least four joysticks and at least like a thir- thirty buttons like between them to that's to control. Of- yeah yeah it is it is very likely like we we keep we keep looking for something but it is very likely the most advanced uh, one on the market today that's what the oh, what kind of game do you need 30 buttons on a joystick for in the arcade <laughs> <laughs> what are you playing <laughs> you plan on re- well, releasing the uh, eve online or something in an arcade <laughs> no but no, but you could probably play it. Yes, you could, um, especially if, especially with especially with the analog controls. Yeah, that, that's going to be like that's going to be much nicer. And you could you could hook up like a Hotas, like a hands on throttle and stick system. Yeah, I just my head's going metal. I think like just walking in this mic, the flight simulator on a bar. Yeah, <laughs> think uh, think like a four 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 player uh, brawler, for example. <laughs> things 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 of that nature, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, so, so we're trying to, we're actually trying to, and that's that's just the input that we actually predicted. Also, the the that same PCB has uh, has support for a coin op for a coin slot machine. Is that, is that, yeah, is that coin, even the right phrase? Coin op, yeah, yeah, coin operator. Yeah, yeah. Co- right. So, and we we realized that first of all, our arcade is probably not ever going to have a coin slot to to put coins in. Uh, and this is like to, coming back to to the to the gold coin that I gave you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but we well, but we do offer that option on the uh, on the PCB. Uh, but what it is going to have is going to have the NFC ch- uh, NFC chip that you can actually scan things. So theoretically, you could pay for if, if the if the proprietor of the of the bar or the establishment that where the arcade is wants it to be a monetized thing, then you can uh, you can actually pay to play like uh, via cell phone. Or you can use like uh, in-house tokens that would be like those game check coins that mm-hmm. I that I gave you uh, that we three D print uh, printed ourselves uh, and can like store either credit or can store your uh, user information. So maybe like uh, there's a game that, uh, that or, like there would be a game that has uh, your player profile or needed your player profile somewhere and you could just uh, walk up to the arcade and put it down uh, on the control surface and it would be like oh it's you okay. And like it would, it would load up your user profile uh, on the spot with you just you putting putting your gold coin on the on the arcade. I, I love the idea of rather than like walking around the arcade with like a pocket full of change, <laughs> you could just have this one coin. I like, go up to like I go up to the reception desk and like oh, I can have twenty credits, please. Yeah, Give me your yeah. coin. Top load that so, up with twenty credits and just walk around and like oh, I'll play this one. I'll play that one. And... Yeah, that's the that's basically the idea. Yeah, yeah, that's basically the idea to have it like a like a that's called a cashless wallet. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the in the event industry, so both of now the implementation, of course, will will be totally up to the uh, to the proprietors, right? Uh, it's I've I've worked in projects that use this use that that kind of system before, where you where you use uh, like your your cell phone 
uh, and it, it's just just a matter of if we can if we can get it into into enough doors through through enough doors so that uh, people would actually find the benefit of that system so they would use our system uh, like for future for future games yeah that I mean, would be that's, that's something I'd, I'd be really up for you I mean, when you first gave me the coin I loved it because um, I think I just start when I, when you first gave me that coin I just started to go cashless mm-hmm. and. I don't think I've used cash for about two years now. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I, I, I have used my card to just like, yeah, yeah. tap on my card. Or if I don't have my wallet on me, I can just use my phone. And I just pay with my phone. So it's kind of like, <clears throat> I love the idea of going to an arcade and yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got my coin, use that. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I, I can see that catching on really well. Yeah. That's, that's hopefully... And one, one of the other things... With uh, the we'll coin, see, we'll see. I think, I think the... the... Sorry, go on. Sorry? Is it, one of the things with a coin no, 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 no. Do you high scars on it as well. Yeah, because uh, it basically it just uh, uh, collects a string. So a string is like a, just a piece of text, right, in, in mm-hmm. code. Um, so you could have like a player profile that, that could be stored somewhere online. And it could just uh, be your ID, for example. Like that doesn't... ID in, in terms of not, not like relating to who you are. Like, yeah, no like that, But just to, to a user profile somewhere online that's like... It says, oh, it's a, I know, it's Resident Flux or it's a Badger or mm-hmm. something like that, right? Uh, and th- that server could have the information on uh, whether, like, what kind of character you have in a game, what's your high score. Uh, I don't know if you're, um, if you met us, like that. That was that was the idea when I gave you the coin. So that when you like, uh, we started off with the idea that the gold ones you could only get from us, and then you then we would print. Uh, like the gold ones that have the the game check and G on it, right? Yeah. And then we would print custom ones for all the for all the other bars that that would happen. And then the gold ones would actually have like some kind of extra when you use them, uh, uh, use them uh, at, at any of our arcades, right? You'd either have like an extra life, an extra weapon, or something. Yeah. <laughs> but you would but you would have to actually meet us to get it. But that kind of went out the window because we started using them as uh, as business cards. And right now, I think it <laughs> just goes to the Game Check Arcades website. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I like yeah. the idea of just um, I like the idea of like going out for a beer, seeing your own machines on the side, and just like, oh, I'll have a look. Like, see the high score. Oh, I beat that. Get my coin out. Click. There you go. Top of the high score table. And then just walk off again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, that is, you wouldn't actually have to do that with with the game trick arcades because uh, one of the ideas of making it like a modern modern thing is that they would all be connected to the internet. They wouldn't have to be. So we, we never want to force like uh, any proprietors to, to like ha- need to keep it online. But we would have it obviously to like we would encourage it in, in order to send updates for the games, send uh, like like DLC for the games, uh, send new games, um, bug f- for any kind of bugs fixing. And then like you like you mentioned the leaderboards. The idea is to have like a leaderboard that's local, so anybody who played on this machine, and then you have a global like. First of all, if there are uh, if there are more arcades in the same uh, in the same town, then you would have like neighborhoods uh, competing. Like you'd have your your local one, then then what neighborhood is best, and then then you'd have a global leaderboard like who's best in the world on this game on the on the arcades. And then ultimately, the idea is to have like uh, if uh, two people are uh, at an arcade at the same time, they could play multiplayer on the arcade like in in each in their on their in their perspective respective towns right yeah so you could you could have like online co-op on an arcade machine is what you're saying yeah yeah either co-op or or versus yeah that's, that's cool. you guys just mental i love it <laughs> <laughs> um so moving on so well, that's going that's I'll, I'll, going to have to wait like if if mm-hmm. Is there any of these arcade machines out in the wild at the moment? Is there any? Because I know you're out in Zagreb, are you? So the right now, there was one. There was one, but the bar had to close because of the the current state of, of the world. That's that's the problem. And I'm afraid that the the other the other bar that was also interested also had to close. That was in uh, in uh, Austria, in uh, Vienna, I think. So none of them are actually out, and we're also. Uh, no, actually, there is one in the uh, uh, in the game uh, incubator uh, space uh, here in Croatia. So they're they're the only ones that have it uh, in the wild. That's that's uh, that's operational. But that's also because currently we're we're I'm finishing the uh, like the 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 final touches for the for the new versions, and that's like 
uh, we have three ones that are on the assembly line still needing like several several sev yeah, several problems to be fixed um, and so then then we're going to we're going to go out with those three once they're done um, whether like we're keeping one for for like future uh, future improvements uh, in the office and then the two the two other ones are going to be like spread like uh, spread somewhere somewhere into the wild so they could actually be tested like in the wild because we we figured out figured that that's the only way to to like r really give it give it a good test right yeah cuz i i I've, I've tried selling your machines to three different places <laughs> and <laughs> um, but then, How did it go? <clears throat> we have uh, so we've got arcade club in leeds which is like yeah. three floors of arcades and it's sort of like 16 pound in all machines are on free play mm -hmm. and so and i like interviewed the guy one of the owners of that and i was like you you really need to get a game truck arcade you need a game truck bar top in there and like trying to tell him about them and i i gave your website mm -hmm. and then there was um there's my friend who runs Press Start in Leeds, which is like a little retro gaming thing in a pub. And then there's another gaming pub open up. So I've tried, I've told all of them to buy your machine. <laughs> and then great. lockdown came. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so none of them are well, open now. <laughs> we're hoping we're hoping that eventually the, the whole problem will, will go away. So like we have to either way we have to finish the project, right? So yeah. we want to we want to finish it so that we can say like this is the best that we can do. Uh, at least without like any further funding because yeah i mean there is there there are way more crazier ideas for the for the arcade to do but like eventually you just have to say like this is this is fine now i mean it's the best that we can do now of course we could do better if, if we have six more months uh but yeah we, we want to finish the project so that we can actually get them out and then see how people respond to them but yeah the the current problem the current state is like of the world is a big problem for does does the arcade machine just have one game in it or is it Right now, yes, yeah. yeah. So right now, it's a. It was well, actually, it can ship with with several, but uh, but they're you they're more they're smaller, right? So speed limit is actually the flagship that that goes with your gate. It was always it, it started off its life on a small uh, bar top that that I literally cut out in my in my room, uh, like with a with a box cutter knife because I didn't have a, a jigsaw. <laughs> um, uh, and then like it 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 just uh, it just uh, it developed from there, right? Uh, but the idea is to have our games on it. So any games that the that we make that are of the that that would fit an arcade, obviously, yeah. uh, should should go on it. And uh, we would really like like other developers that that make uh, retro games that are sort of arcade like arcade cabinet friendly to give us a call and we'll, like we can figure something out to to have like a larger uh, library on the. Make it make it an actual platform, not just like for our for our games. Mm -hmm. So, um, you mentioned that speed limit is the flagship game of the arcade. Yeah, uh, which just congratulations, that's released this week. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank um, you. That's, that, a, that's been a really long time coming. Is tomorrow the last day of release? It's been a staggered release, hasn't it? Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this was this was a thing that. Uh, it was. It, it all came down to the communication be between the older consoles. Um, so it's it started off uh, on Tuesday with uh, with a Sony. Then yesterday it was a uh, Steam release. Today is uh, the Switch. Today the Switch and and the Xbox is tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, oh yeah, and we are, we're also on Humble since yesterday. Yeah, that one that one came in late. But how how's it feeling? So uh, this is. One of my favorite things is like going to the expos and meeting indie developers like yourselves. But then to be following a game for two or three years and then see it release, I, I get really excited and I'm really proud of you guys for because there's so many games you see that don't actually go anywhere. So to see it release, I, I'm really proud of you guys for doing <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> How does it feel yourself to be sat there and seeing that it's it, it's out there now? People are playing it. Oh, uh, well. It, it, we kind of had have a little more writing on this one than on All You Can Eat, so we never expected All You Can Eat to be like a big hit. Mm -hmm. our, our first game made in three months and, and everything. Uh, like we had, whereas Speed Limit, like we we really did put a lot of effort into it. So we we got two extra programmers to work on it. Uh, we had two people doing the art. Sorry, three actually programmers working on it at one point. Um, two people doing the art. We had we, we were really lucky to have like a sound guy, uh, our Matja uh, uh to to be in uh, to, to actually be part of Game Check. So it was done completely in house. 
uh, and like the sound took a he, like he he went on a total journey with this with with, with the music. Where, like we started off with with synth wave, and then there was an issue that it's it was like uh, it was too night timey, and we needed to have like the, the, the uh, levels that were in daytime. And he went on a whole journey to figure out this, the the proper like music for it. And, like, I'm really glad that we had this like we had that uh, like available to us. So it was it was a really really big effort. One level was completely different in the in the um, in the build that you might have seen. Oh yeah, because there was there was so long ago. It was completely different. So yeah. Jan, who, also, who you also met, like he came up with some with something that was much better than my initial idea. That was like, uh, and everybody and everybody seems to like that uh, that plane level. So yeah, there was it was it was nice to play when when I got sent my review copy. It, it was nice to actually have the time to play it and get off the freaking train. <laughs> because yes. every time I play the expo, you only get like five, five, ten minutes to quickly play it, and it's like I mean, I got like two carriages, and like every year, it's like I'm going to have that game this year. I'm gonna have it. <laughs> Never did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, to be fair, yeah, that is that that's absolutely true. But to be fair, and then you'll have to correct me, like if this is wrong, but I think it has a a, a great benefit for expos that it is a just sit down and play like kind of kind of game. There are no cutscenes. There were no there was no tutorial. I don't think there was any tutorial ever needed. Cause, cause no, we, we do ramp that, up the action. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was literally... To, and that's the thing where you, you, like, as myself, going around and visiting directors, you sort of like end up with a... I've got five to ten minutes to play this game and then yeah, yeah, yeah. interview you, then I'm off somewhere else. Um, and those five minutes are often chewed up by a tutorial or an opening scene or the, one of the PR people are still going, oh, this is the controls and do this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got two minutes to play it now, whereas you guys were just like, yep. Yeah. It's on. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, was, this one's for shooting. This one's for jumping. Don't die. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. I think, I, think you're, I think the first time you said it, well, this is for jumping. This is for shooting. You will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's... that's, that's uh, and it was, it, To be fair, it was probably accurate, right? No, yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, I, even the review copy I got for it, I was, I was really excited for it and got it on. And I think I die. Uh, my missus came up because I was just shouting at the screen. <laughs> Absolutely shouting it. I'm, I'm, glad yeah. were, I'm glad I wasn't allowed to stream it till um, the embargo passed so I got a bit of timing on it and my missus came up and started to check what I was doing and she's like oh you're dying a lot aren't you I mean, you think what paused it and I think it was like played 15 minutes died a, uh, 227 times and I'm like you think <laughs> <laughs> it's really it was really hard to judge by the by the end right like even even people now like there were so there are people that that uh, managed to 100% the game like they get a they get a zero death run in seven hours of playing, and then there are people who who, who like left a, an angry review like no this is just repetition and there's no skill involved and there's like it's it's just like it's it's just hard and nothing else and so it's and for us obviously we've been we've been at it for like, like a year and a half and we're like it's really hard for us to judge whether or not it's like, yeah what's we're, we're hard and what's play. yeah I mean it'd be interesting I. I keep looking out i've been trying to reckon about a week or so of just seeing some mental youtubers speed running it and and stuff like it's it's, it's brilliant I yeah we, like like when we were when we we're doing the achievements we were like well we're not going to put a zero death achievement on it because because it would drive somebody who, who wants to 100 percent it and might not be like the best player ever like yeah. insane so so yeah but like like seeing it now that it's that it's obviously like it's possible and it's possible, like, to do it within a day. So we we might actually add like a secret achievement, like that's that's not linked to the Steam API, so it doesn't it doesn't frustrate anybody who can't hundred <laughs> percent. But it might be a little nod for like for, for people awesome. who actually can manage. Yeah. So it's going back a bit to to speed limits development. This because I struggled in my review to put it into a genre because it has hot all of them. <laughs> yes that's uh, that's pretty much accurate well to be fair it doesn't like it's not a you 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 definitely can't say it's an it's an rpg right it's uh no no but i'm, I'm expecting the fps dlc to come in a couple of months or something <laughs> oh but yeah people have people have suggested it yes uh but i was, I was when i was streaming i was trying to explain it to my audience i'm just like um it's a side-scrolling <laughs> shooting top-down driving isometric helicopter reverse afterburner game and they're like what just sit and watch you'll see <laughs> <laughs> how how did that idea come about were, were you trying to make six different five different games and just went 
ah, we'll throw it together, we're running out of time. <laughs> uh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. No, it was, um, so th the initial idea for the game, like initially, the game was supposed to be 3D uh, and have all those levels, right? It was supposed to be a first person shooter that, that, that does all that. Now, the thing with that is that that idea came from like 2001 or two, like somewhere around the time where, when uh, I played uh, Soldier of Fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had like this really cool train level on it. I think you 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 could uh, one 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 level was uh, like on a subway train, and one was one was uh, on an actual train. You were you were chasing something. Mm -hmm. uh, you were chasing nukes, I think. I think that that was the plot. Uh, but even that was like several years after thinking about it, because uh, like I grew up in the '90s, and like we had, I think. I'm not sure. Like it might just be my family, obviously, but uh, I, I have this, I have this um, uh, sort of perspective that's slightly shifted, like in time, uh, like chronological perspective. I mean, uh, to to when things came out. So I I got my first console. It was the Mega Drive, but it was the Mega Drive Two. So it was, and even then, I think it was already several years like after it came out because mm -hmm. it had it, it was bundled with the Lion King game. Uh, yeah, that, that was quite a while after it came out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Lion King came out in '94, and this was '96 or '97. So it was it was a long time after after like the 16-bit era was already long underway, right? Uh, but back then, so, so my my pool of games and the only other games I played were either on a 386 or a Sega Master System at my friend's place, right? And so the kind of games that we played, like they were very they were very varied. That's true. Like uh, like my friend had like uh, MotoGP or Grand Prix. No, it was Grand Prix. It was a uh, Formula One racing. Um, and there was Chase HQ. There was a uh, there was a Monster Monster Boy in Wonder World. No, uh, Wonder Boy in Monster World. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they were they were they were like very different, but they were obviously very locked to the kind of genre they were in. Like so, Wonder Boy was always side scrolling, mm -hmm. uh, MotoGP or, or Grand Prix was always from the from the back, uh, and I really liked uh, like simulations. Right, they, they weren't very there weren't very many on the on the Master System or the Mega Drive, but like I played the F15 on the on 386, like on a PC, um, and so like this idea of like being able to do all those things like in a game. Like long before GTA Three came out, and like you yeah. could actually, or, or Vice City, or San Andreas, where, where you could actually both uh, and, and both, but drive and fly a helicopter and a plane and everything. Like long, long before that, like I was, and I wasn't thinking like in three D. I was thinking like a side scroller, like a top down, like from the from the back, and so on. And that kind of went went by by the bait by the wayside, right? Many many years later, like in our student organization, for um, as a as a part of a, a PR campaign, because we always used to do posters and flyers, and like by the by the time I was doing the the, the third or fourth like posters and flyers thing, I was like, nobody is seeing these because everybody's <laughs> doing posters and flyers. Like, let's do something. Uh, and the idea came like it, this was a com complete stroke of luck, right? That we had uh, Alex, who's now the co-founder of, of GameCheck was uh, leading that that event uh, i was doing the design and we had a friend programmer who who could actually code the thing and so like over over a weekend i i put up a design for a for the for an arcade cabinet we had it cut like we had we had the panels cut we got uh, everybody to to um, to volunteer to paint it screw it together put the panels in put an old really really old computer in, even for the time in <laughs> uh, we bought we bought this huge red. Um, oh, this in, in Croatian it has this we very weird name, but it's it's generally it's basically just a big red button, like an industrial button that you would use for an alarm or or like to stop a machine oh, from yeah. chewing your leg. Yeah, like uh, a, like a kill switch type thing. Yeah, yeah, like like a kill switch. Like it's huge. It was like like a, as big as a CD, I think. Like in, in yeah, width. We, we kind of thing we have on a, on like plant machine. In fact, you get like a big yeah, yeah. square with a red button on. You hit it and it. Yeah, we sit to undo it and everything's yeah. Dead. yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So, so we used that for a, for a button, and over a weekend, we built a, a, a free running, not a free running, just a, a running game that was a, like one button game, like Cannabalt, but it was completely our graphics. So it was promoting the event as like as you would, as you would go along. Mm -hmm. We built the whole machine, wired it up, like it lit up the entire the entire room, uh, <laughs> hallway of a, of a university at night because. Uh, I, I bought like hundred watt bulbs. And, and a yeah, yeah. Sorry, and, and the, 
<laughs> and the friend who wired them up wired them up so i have no idea about electricity so it was either in parallel or series either either way the way he he, he wired them up it was was weaker and i was like but no the, the point was to to make it glow like and he was like no you, <laughs> yeah it was like no you have to get a different kind of a socket <laughs> so it wouldn't melt it was like okay i'll get it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, so so it was. It, it really lit up the the lit up lit up the entire hallway like of a university, and people played it within like inside the three weeks that that was the PR uh, like push. Uh, the people played it around ten thousand times. It was like one of the the most mentioned things in the in the forums uh, on the university wow. at the time. So it was like it was actually. It, we ended up also also doing posters and flyers, but I'm I'm glad that we got this in because that was the. That that was my sort of direct uh, experience with with making games well, like at the time, and the, that basically set the tone that we had to make game check eventually, right? Yeah. And and as was as was the pixel art, right? Because I never did pixel art before, uh, and like that plus all the gaming in between just eventually amalgamated into what's like speed limit eventually was going to be. So how, when did, so, okay, Agnes, so you mentioned that was like a running game, but how did you get this idea of swapping genres? How oh, it was that? just, yeah, it was just that thing. Like but just because uh, you loved them, so you, yeah, you know, yeah. put them all together. So ideally, I would probably want to have a game where, um, like, if we had if we had more time, like, if, if we realized that, like, after all you're kidding, that it didn't take, like, a, a year and a half to, to just make an arcade, to <laughs> just an arcade game, um, like ideally, I would have like more of an open world where, like, if you went in, you went into a car, it would be a top-down racer, or if you jumped on a motorcycle, it would be one from the back, mm -hmm. or if you went on a mission, it would be from the side. Like, it would be like it would be more open, but it would switch to those genres. The compromise was that to have all in, all of them in one game, but then it would have to be a much more linear game, obviously. And then, like through iterations then it then like then it became clear that obviously if they're if they're very separate like i mean there were games before that that did this like earthworm gym for example had mm -hmm. had this idea that like you had uh, yeah, it, you it was a platformer and then you jumped on the rock yeah yeah so it was yeah. a it was a platformer it was a platformer by default but between every level you had like a racing game that was from the back inside a wormhole thing yeah. Uh, yeah. there was there were levels that are that had free fall there was a level where you fight a boss that's uh, on on a bungee cord uh so like there were there were games that did this before mickey mania as well right so one of the levels initially like the, the plane levels was initially inspired by a level in mickey mania where you're chased by a moose uh that had this like for the time for for the mega drive era insane 3d effect like i have we, i still have no idea how, how they do it how they do it so well like it's it's masked so well that from from what i understand i, I don't think the mega drive could actually render it in 3d but somehow they did it like they, yeah so now you've got me thinking about it the first thing that popped to my head was a uh, sonic the hedgehog 2 which is mm -hmm. a platformer, but then when you hit the bonus level, it's 3D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the back. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a racer from the back. But even that, I think, could be actually faked, like the same way that we we kind of faked the uh, the the motorcycle level, right? Mm -hmm. So none of that is actually 3D. Like all of that is just just like the MotoGP games. None of them are, none of them are actually yeah. 3D. So we, we just do like crazy things to make it appear that that it is. Uh, but but yeah. So eventually eventually it, it just. Uh, sort of through iteration came like we came we came to the realization that this uh, th these transitions are going to be like the the center point of the game because we wanted this non-stop action that like once you start we do have like a we do we do have a cutscene at the beginning i think it, we had to we try to keep it as short as possible so it's it's around 10 seconds i think i, I forgot already yeah but it's, it's literally the guy walks in hands you a gun yeah 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 Pretty much, he fall, he falls through the roof. He walks in. He walks in slowly. The the the, the limit of that is that he needed to walk slowly because he, we needed to show him the shell like after after the fall. <laughs> uh, so that, that that was basically the 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 choke point of the of the cutscene. But yeah, even that. But even that can be skipped, right? So one of the rules was no unskippable parts of of the game because like that I, th I think that that's a that's that's a modern sin of game design so like like everything everything that can be skipped is is like you you can skip it uh but yeah the the, tr the transitions after that like just seemed like the linchpin of the whole of the whole story right so that that's the only way that you can you can do it uh you can do it uh, seamlessly 
and that's the only way that you can actually keep the action going. And they're ultimately like when it boils down to it, the rule of cool that they just they just look cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it does that there is literally no loading times in the game at all. Like it doesn't sorry, I, I, I didn't didn't catch there, that. It doesn't seem it gives the impression that there's no loading time in the game at all. Like you jump off the train. Oh, there isn't. No, 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 there isn't. The, the entire game loads. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's brilliant. That you yeah, yeah. The entire, the entire game loads in the in the beginning. Yeah, you can play the entire loop like on an infinite loop, and it's just there's just no load time. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's one of the modes. That's actually one of the modes because yeah. Was was that difficult to achieve or? Well, it had it had its benefits and and downsides, obviously, like everything else. So one of the one of the benefits was that we were actually making six different games, right? Mm-hmm. So luckily that freed up the programmers so one of them could do one level and the other one could do another level. They just eventually had to merge them together. Mm-hmm. So that, that, was a, that was a big benefit because we could do two things in parallel. We also had, we, we have uh, Yuritz, our, our pixel artist, who did uh, art for one, for one level, while I could do art for, for another level at the same time. So that, that, was, that was a great benefit. On the other hand, obviously, yeah, eventually merging the code together meant meant doing like a lot of like jump jumping over the hoops to to get it to run together. Everybody has their own idea on how how they want it connected, um, and and ultimately all the all the assets have to have to be loaded properly before. Uh, then eventually, and I mean, we would, like if it wasn't for our publisher course, we wouldn't even we wouldn't even attempt to do it for for other for other platforms yeah. right <laughs> so they they did the porting but obviously this means uh, for us that we had to do things that uh, like we we had to address things that that are specific for for console processors right uh, so i mean they, none of it should be noticeable now but but when we started we realized that some of the things like the flashes from the from the cars in the motorcycle level which uh, which we thought like really brought out the the uh, like the style of that of that level, mm-hmm. uh, like took up a lot of processing, like a really a lot, <laughs> um, uh, and that had to, that had to be addressed. And so there, there was a lot of back and forth, like to get it to get it all seamless. But I mean, like thankfully the the story is uh, the story is uh, simple enough and weird enough to accommodate the the looping. Uh, and and yeah, so th- this was this was something that we did from the from the beginning. We like we knew, we knew we had to go back like to the start. So yeah, and I've got a question. One of my friend Steve Perrin also reviewed it over little bits of gaming because um, he's got this thing now where he blames me for indie games. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> well, I, I told him uh, there, uh, there could be a worse thing that you could be blamed for. I, I, I spent about five months banging on about Hyperparasite that it was the game of the best game of 2020. Even mm-hmm. throw, throw it into the AAA games, it still comes out as the best game of 2020. Um, because I was banging on about it so much, he ended up reviewing it and calls it the best game of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I told him I was reviewing this, I was and I showed him a couple of our interviews from previous expos where we met up and stuff. And uh, he's he's is a game author essentially first, so he writes mm-hmm. um books about the history of British gaming. Mm-hmm. The retro art and pixel art was right down his street. Right. Um, and he's fallen in love with it now. <laughs> Great. Uh, but it's he, always nice to hear. He wanted me to ask me, I told him I was interviewing you today, he wanted me to ask you um, that a couple of questions here. Will we be using the genre cocktail idea for future games? Um, yes. Maybe non-copyright infringing tour through gaming history. Oh, that sounds, that sounds interesting. But to be fair, it was already done. Evil Land did its like much more extensively than we did. Yeah, I think that's why you put non-copyright infringing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, no, but I, I actually played Evil Ends. It was no, it was Evil Ends too because they both did it. But Evil Ends two is, was much more extensive. I loved that game. That that was that was amazing. That was that's like speed limit on on not just steroids but like some secret government <laughs> government shit. It was that's amazing. That's huge. And it was also done by like four programmers, I think total. It's it's insane how big that game is. Um, but you say you've, you've got plans to use this genre cocktail up. Uh, yeah, so. maybe not. Maybe not to the same extent. So, uh, like now that we now, now that we did all this, like uh, there are things. Uh, so the way I like to I like to go about designing things is uh, from simpler to to more complex. Obviously, there was a slight jump from all you can eat to uh, to speed limit, 
but like for, for future games it would be nice to if we could focus on, uh, on like at least several of them mm-hmm. uh, or, or even one of them and then just uh, like uh, work on the mechanic a little more because I think we we all know that like all of those uh, like any of the levels could be expanded into a whole game like if we if we worked as long on it as we did the entire game right um, so for example the the damage mechanic that that we have in the last level and I don't think well you can correct me if I'm wrong I I don't think I've ever seen that in like in a pixel art game before where you actually have two layers uh, on a vehicle and you actually peel off one. The, yeah. the armor layer and like you, you actually expose the 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 like underlying structure underneath and it actually the bullets you can see where the bullets actually hit and the and the holes appear there yeah, you threw the bullet holes across the wing and stuff. yeah 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 and they're not they're not random they're actually there where the where the bullet was uh, so we actually thought that we would we would do we would use that for a, for a, for a next game but we already did that here so we might actually well we're very likely going to build on that uh, and I would, I would like to maybe do uh, two two genre cocktail if, instead of like six, but that, but then focus on, on like things that actually work really well in them, like the the car level, like the the physics the physics that uh, our programmer Vanya Vanya made for that level, and like he first did very realistic physics that that weren't fun like they were like the cars would spin out of control as soon as you nicked them against against another car that was coming the other way like it looked it looked really it looked really cool but it was it was not fun to play <laughs> um i mean the, that but, car level is 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 my worst one <laughs> that that is the worst like, the, the others are, i'm pretty decent at the others um there's one bit on the train but yeah the others i'm pretty decent at that, that, that car level just there are a few there are a few tricks to playing it safe you you're like uh, you can listen to um you can listen for the horn of the in- oncoming cars. Mm-hmm. So if you if you try to not not wiggle between between the lanes a lot, and, and you listen for, for the horn, and then when you hear the horn, you just move to another lane. That that's that's like a good oh, trick. That's and clever. when you <laughs> <laughs> so there there are a few there are a few moments like that when we, when we put in like as many like so anybody who played like has has noticed that there's no uh, there's no HUD or, or like an on screen display no, or no, an overlay or no. anything in, in the entire game. game. Yeah, so that that was one of the the pillars of the game. So we wanted this un, unbroken experience. We, like the only conceit we had to make was for so, okay, we did want the the level names, and we eventually realized that we had to had to put in the uh, um, what the what the secondary button does uh, underneath underneath the like a subtitle underneath the the level title because there was there was no other way to do it. Like the the only other every other way that we tried was either too intrusive or or felt like an overlay. This way is it, at least it's it looks like it's contextual in the game and it's slightly more cinematic. So mm-hmm. like that's but but that's the only conceit that, that we have inside the game for for like uh, uh, for like telephoning in that it's uh, that that something has changed, right? Uh, uh, everything yeah. else is everything else is uh, in the game. So if you see the car car smoking, you know that it's that you're like a bullet away from from being done if a if a shot is aimed at your head in the car level it'll go through your head it won't go to the car it will, it will go through your head um like you like as mentioned the, the on the on the plane levels plane level you will notice uh you will notice like uh where the bullets hit and you know that if you if you're hit in the wings it, it'll it'll take a little more it'll take a few more bullets to hit you than if you're hit into the body of the plane mm-hmm. and same same goes for the enemies as well and so they're like we we try to to do as many of these nods uh, in the in the helicopter level. You can both see the cockpit go green when you can launch a missile, and you can hear the the tone for the for the missile to like that it's that it's free to launch uh, when you because it has a small cooldown because it was a little too easy when you could shoot like just too many of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's there's no HUD in, in the entire game. That's the that's kind of like that that's one of the things that I'd like to keep for as much as I can going going forward. Like in some future games, where where you can actually tell the tell the state of the game by just what you're looking at. So, did you you've got six genres in total in Speed Limit? Did did you cut any out, or was it all uh, yes, yes and no? So we changed one. We changed one for the, that reverse afterburner. That's uh, the the barrel rolling plane plane level was was completely new. Um, there was there was a plan for for another isometric one from the other side. So if you if you play the game, like if you if you pay attention to how the camera moves, it never moves past the ninety degree point. So this this was this was like a like we had to eventually for the plane level we had to do a like a spin maneuver on the plane. Like it, it still looks nice. Yeah, yeah. 
but but the camera was never supposed to move more than 90 degrees so the the transition between helicopter and the plane when you launch yourself self on a missile towards the plane was supposed to be a playable level that's a, that was isometric from the other side mm-hmm. uh, things things like that but no th- this was like there, there were other ideas. There were ideas for boats because we went through all the yeah, all the everything. vehicles, right? Yeah. <laughs> like if you get the if you if you get it on Steam, uh, like there's there's an art book that goes with it, and there's a you, you can see the like the very very basic drawings of mine from like several years ago that that actually have boats and and the missile and the and the rocket in the end and everything. Uh, but we kind of we cut them out because we realized that. First of all, it takes a long time to do any of the levels. Like it was, it was three months. Uh, well, it was it was even more for the for the train level until we got like going, like uh, uh, like and, until we got everybody going on the game, basically. Um, so it take, it took a long time, and we realized like no, we, we want a we want a complete story that ends that that we can do from from start to finish. And so things went out like before we started. So I don't really I don't really feel like like they're necessarily cut out. Mm-hmm. Like it was a, it was a, I think it was like, especially for the boat. I mean, there was well, like looking back, we, we did it contextually. So there's no, there's no point where you, you go to a slower vehicle. So if you, if, if you, if you had a level that was a missile between the, the rocket and the, and the plane, you would be going to a slower vehicle after the yeah. rocket and so, so after a missile. So it was it, like contextually, it wouldn't make sense. It would, it would be really cool for the game, but it wouldn't make contextual sense. Um, so yeah. yeah. Moving from vehicle to vehicle, though, is very game chuck at times. <laughs> How so? <laughs> I mean, you start off jumping off a train into an open-top car, that's fair enough, and then end up riding a missile into an aeroplane. Yeah, yeah. This, so this was obviously, since, since the game is like takes a lot of inspiration from like 80s and 90s uh, action movies, mm-hmm. the, the idea was always going to be to, to keep it keep it uh and not keep it like make it as ludicrous as possible as it goes along so like the after after the motorcycle you fling yourself into the helicopter like, yeah you go up a ramp and jump into <laughs> yes. the helicopter it's, just, it's mental i love it <clears throat> yeah so how, how long did you take coming up with them how many different versions of that were there because oh no 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 that was that was like pretty much there was just the one like there, there, there was no other way <laughs> yeah so so the rule was like it has to be so I feel like like they're not entirely seamless. Like there was because we had to we had to uh, do it like between uh, programmers. Like when you jump from the from the train to the like obviously in, inside the inside the same kind of level, it's seamless. Mm-hmm. Like when you jump onto the roof, like it's just a hole in the roof, yeah. uh, and you platform up uh, up to the up to the roof. That's that's fine. But the transitions between between vehicles, um, I, I feel like the the train to, to the to the car one might be the most um the closest to what to what we had in mind because as soon as you jump into the car you can move it like front to back a little yeah. and then and then the camera shifts like all the other ones were i mean they're they're still pretty quick but they had to be either very quick they had to be just like explosive for you to not to, to not feel like you you're out of control right yeah. and that you're missing something like uh, the worst sin for me, like in uh, like in gameplay, is to to have something a cinematic that should have been playable. Like so, movies have this this idea like you have to show not tell, and I think that like games need to have this play don't show show yeah, aspect. I agree right? with that. Yeah, you you, yeah, you so, want to feel like you're involved in the game, not start. Watching. Yeah, 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 and and not like press uh, not not press uh, a button to to do a maneuver or something. So I mean, sure, like when you when you transition from the car to to the motorcycle, you you it does it does it automatically but it does it automatically after you kill the guy that's on the motorcycle so yeah, you, you have still to kill the guy to jump onto it yeah you still use the mechanics that are uh, that are in the game when you jump onto the on, onto the helicopter you use the ramp that you just used like three times before, before to to cut down the the hp of the of the helicopter um you launch your you launch your missile at the plane like you would launch it like you'd launch it like ten times earlier on on other planes inside the level. So mm-hmm. it's never it's never a quick time event. It's always like something that's connected with the game. Yeah, I mean, how how's the game be received? I mean, it's still quite early because it's not out on everything yet. But how how are you finding the the review and the feedback? Oh, well, the feedback the feedback seems great. I mean, uh, the the PlayStation. Uh, ask me anything on, on reddit was was like really well received it was like we were really surprised um uh the, the steam reviews are still positive 
I mean, obviously, like like I said, people are going to be angry that it's that it is a game that sometimes you have to remember things. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that it's it's a game that you, you that you can do without skill and that it's just that it's just memorizing because I've seen I've seen people do it in several no. different ways. Yeah, I, I mean, mean on, on, it's a, it's on a valid art. Play, playing it on normal, I can sometimes get past that fucking annoying bit on the train. Um, well, the guys in trench coats with knives stand up. Yeah, <laughs> I've memorized that exactly, and I think I can get past that in two in ten, two eight, maybe ten attempts. Yeah, but you can also do it. You can also do it like that's the only time that you can actually uh, do it cautiously. Like if you don't just run through it, because like, then then everybody will get up, and there there yeah, is not yeah, enough time okay, to do it. Yeah. But if you do it cautiously, like the, they are all they're, uh, they're uh, their activation times are staggered. Yeah, I've figured so, that out. So I'll go forward, shoot that one, turn back, shoot that one, move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't always work out. So quite often, <laughs> turn up with a knife in my head. <laughs> there is a there is a limit to like how many I think you can you can actually actually shoot. We tried not to nerf the gun, so so it will shoot about as fast as you can click. But it is limited to because everything is visual in this game. Like it is limited to the anim animation of the of the gun repeating. Mm -hmm. And that's three frames, I think. So that's one fifth of a second. No, one has to be even less than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so that, you're finding the feedback that is is generally positive. So or? far, so far, it's generally positive. Yeah, they're, like they're these are all. I mean, these are all valid criticisms, and and uh, we realized like early on that it's not going to be uh, a game for everyone. And this is one of this was one of the hardest things to do to actually embrace that because, like, if if we did it halfway, then it would be easy and it like it would be a like a uh, like a whole uh, journey through the through arcade games, sure. But if it was easy, then it would it would still be missing something. I think In, like you, I think you have to embrace this idea. Like, it's not going to be for everybody, or it, it should be for everybody if you're making a game like that. But like, if you're not, then you have to embrace it. You have to go all in on that. Uh, and uh, so far, we're actually very happy that it's that it's turning out like okay as it is. Because on, on Steam, at least, it seems that it's that it's uh, positive. It's like 92, 92, 93 percent, I think, so far. It's still too early because well, there's only like a handful of uh, reviews out. Uh, and we're doing we're so far we're doing well on Metacritic uh, and the reviews that should be reviewed, but it's still not official because uh, sorry, it takes like four. Uh, for official reviews for it to be registered on Metacritics. Yeah. I mean, so we, that might still. We, I gave it nine out of 10. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> and then I've, I've seen a lot of the reviews you've been sharing on your Twitter, all like four out of five, nine out of 10, four out of. Obviously, the review seems to be at the same point. And these are from a vast array of reviewers. It's not just retro gamers, there's, there's a wide range of reviews. So it's, it's definitely hitting, hitting home. Yeah, I, th I think we, we we did hit something. We, we obviously hit something right. I mean, again, we uh, we realized that it's not going to be for everybody. But then again, we hope that we did all the things. Like, I'm really, like, ones that make me the most happy is ones that say that it's not for them, but they still realized, like, what we did. That's that's kind of, like, uh, yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's a really good, like, I think... Uh, thing to, to have like to, to at least recognize the, the work that was put into it all the little details all the all the work that was done for it I mean again can't can please everybody wouldn't want to because uh, like then then we wouldn't make the game that we wanted to uh, but like yeah it's like it did surprise me that it's that it's being received so well well that, that, that was one of the things that I had to change in my review before I published it was that um, one of my criticisms bought um, it's a great game and I absolutely love it but there's not much replayability here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then I had to go back and change my review before I published it because I was like, yeah, there's not much really to play. And then I found myself playing it for hours just to, because I noticed it's an achievement <laughs> completing it in under 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think my quickest time is 32.17. And it started at 41 and I've shaved it down and shit. And I realized, like, yeah, yeah. actually, no, I've just spent another 20 hours doing this. There yeah, is replayability yeah. here, and I'm I'm not an achievement hunter or a speedrunner or like that, but I found myself getting it. I'm gonna get that fucking number down. I'm gonna get that thirty minutes. There is a there is a certain kind of replayability. That's that's a, that's probably the most accurate way of putting it, right? So the, there is the the idea of this idea of challenging yourself is basically something that is akin to the arcades of the eighties and nineties, right? Yeah. So that that that's kind of the thing. We we actually. To, tomorrow we're having a discussion on uh, what what extras we might we might want to put in because 
there are still levels that um, like they, they have more to give uh, and we need to see like how, how much we can actually put like put into it we also obviously want to do like more projects uh, put what everything that we've learned already in speed limit into into new things um, but yeah, I mean, there's uh, the and one of the one of the things that are definitely going to go in is the leaderboards. The only the reason they're they're not in, obviously, since you have the the timer already in the game, is that we need to find a way to like at least make it at least make it reasonably hard for for like uh, for people not to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the, that's the only reason why it's already not live. Uh, that and like it takes it takes some time for for it to update on uh, on consoles. So like we have to we really have to figure out like a I don't know it, I really don't want to use that word but a roadmap like of, of yeah, up, like updates. I mean, they're, they're going to go into it. Have, have you found um, where the players cheating, or they if they played the game in a way you were anticipating? Oh no no, no 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 no! Not just not not that people are not that people are uh, they're like they're cheating uh, while playing, that, but they might cheat to get a, a score in, like ah, to, no, to, to get a better time in. Because I mean, one of the first things I did, because I was I played it a couple of times at Expo, so the first thing I did when I booted up my review copy was shoot the guy at the beginning. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> and that that don't work. You know what I do. <laughs> There's a uh, our our uh, our oh, what's the what's the our PR guy. Sorry, sorry, Iggy, if you're watching this. Uh, community manager was the was the word I was looking for. All right, uh, just just published a tweet like I think it was yesterday, showing showing it in slow motion how the how the agent in the in the beginning just dodges your bullets when you when you shoot at him. Yeah, it's a little bit like because straight away I just like no, I'm not playing. Bang! Like oh no, don't you can't do all to him. Never mind, I'll, and I'm dead. Um, so then start stop clearing and just running away. And it was yesterday. I think yesterday I saw the tweet where it was it very like Agent Smith from the Matrix. He looks like yeah, he yeah. punches it and like, yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but this big up like referencing that while I was streaming it, um, I had uh, a lot of people in the chat comparing the different levels um so there's and there's some really iconic games are getting mentioned as well so there's like mm -hmm. the the helicopter scene and a lot of people generally agreed that with desert strike yeah yeah so mm, yes and no obviously uh so i i'm a really big fan of, of the uh, of uh well urban strike was i think the one that i played most because that that was that was available to me on the mega drive uh, from yeah, the I think it was jungle video. strike for me because that's the first one i got <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah 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 i i have jungle i actually own a, a copy of, of a, a cartridge of, of jungle strike now but the urban strike was the one that i that i could uh, uh, get get a video store like a, lo a local video store right so th that that was my first that was my first contact with it so there's definitely a, a bit of that, but also uh, when I saw and then I actually never played, I, I think I just I think I tried it for speed limit the the Return of the Jedi for the Atari. So that was that one had that one had the uh, isometric view, but obviously yeah, there's the helicopter and the yeah, yeah, yeah. and and, that, and the, I was quite happy. I, I don't know, but yeah, man, I suppose it's what the question is: is how how do you feel about being linked to those games? Because people were the bike the bike uh, level. People comparing to the bike scene from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, I never got to that bit in Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> um, in the original one. Yeah, I didn't see that. No, no, no. Yeah, you're like you're on, you're on the you're leaving Midgar. You're on the motorbike with a sword on either side of you. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, so a lot of people That's... comparing comparing that to Final Fantasy VII. There's Desert Strike, Chase HQ. Um, so there's all these iconic games. That yeah, we. So your games getting mentioned alongside them. How does that feel? I mean that's great, but uh, to be fair, like we we never we never hid this fact, like uh, that 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 we were using these games as a uh, as a starting off point. Like we always say that, like uh, definitely the first level was really inspired by by Metal Slug. Obviously, one shot, one kill uh, action was like uh, is is like a cornerstone of the of the of that game, and so so it is in in uh, in Speed Limit as well. Um, Desert Strike uh, definitely informed the the, uh, the way the gun operates uh, in uh, in the helicopter level. I yeah, saw somebody. I, I was like, the the gun in the in the helicopter level. Like re we really had problems with it. The solution, the current solution, at least, was to to uh, speed it up to, to speed up for you to see uh, how the mechanic of it. But uh, I, still, I love, how, I love how you lock the gun. On the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. at so, first I was just like, like you would on that type of game, keep your button pressed down and, and just keep shooting constantly. And then I realized that if you do that, you're only shooting at the edge of the screen. 
yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to let go to shoot up the up the river and come back. Yeah, but it will. Stop that. But if it but if it meets something along the way, it'll stop and lock onto it until it until it destroys. It. And if there if there are boats next to each other, you can actually just you can just keep shooting from one to, to the other one. But I actually saw people do it by actually tapping the space bar and, and being able to being able to shoot it like just with with volleys of, of like shots like without without locking it on. Like I did, I didn't really think that was possible. And this, like this brings us back to the to the no hard thing. Like when I, when I see that, I think that some things we could have probably done better if like if people don't catch on to to how it's working. Mm-hmm. But then I, I suppose that most people did. So I'm like, <laughs> but but yeah, like it's, back to back to like being being mentioned to other games. Like we never we never made a secret of it that that uh, like we saw Afterburner and we wanted to make a better one. We saw Metal Slug and we, well. It's probably not better than than Metal Slug, like. But, uh, <laughs> well, that's a claim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be that would that would be a little too 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 much. Uh, but I mean, obviously, the 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 games the the game style is completely different than Metal Slug. So we we didn't we, and obviously it's just for the two for the first two levels. So it's not we, we don't go we don't go that much into it in, into exploring it that much. Uh, and the animations are, are slightly different. I I love the ones in Metal Slug, but. It, like we did, we needed to do something that it's that's more. I think the closest we get to it is uh, the kill those are the the snow plow in the in the in the oh. car level. I, I, that that's that one that that's my favorite animation. Like Yuri really did himself for that. That that's uh... there's a bit that annoys me with that bit, and it's I've got a nice one. Then it'll there's a bit where it moves across in front of you, but then speeds you up. So you just, sometimes you can't help but hit the back of it, and it's just. There's just no need. There's just no need. <laughs> <laughs> it has it has a rhythm to it. It has a rhythm to it, but it is like you do have to play it a few times. Like it, I think it would be considerably more frustrating if if there were no checkpoints. Yeah, that that was a that was a conceit that we had yeah. we eventually oh. had to make. Yeah, the checkpoints are a lifesaver when when you're first playing. Um, yeah, but, and I think one of the things that it's a shame, like because I, I don't know what things are like in Zagreb, but uh, my over here we're still in quite a sit quite a big lockdown um and for me this this is a great what i call a beer and pizza game they like, get, yeah, get yeah. Create a beer and a couple of pizzas get the lads round and like who can get like five minutes on it past the pad across yeah. and, and unfortunately we're not a lot of people in the houses at the moment so it's <laughs> uh, not at all but i i always think it's one of the perfect games just kind of just pass around the pad every five minutes and have a laugh and joke see who gets furthest yeah that's well, that's that's kind of going back to the to the arcade. Like, so since it was a since it was envisioned from the from the get go uh, as an arcade bar, arcade cabinet game, that's kind of what we had in mind. So our our the whole the whole philosophy behind the arcade cabinet that we're doing is like we we know that you can do multiplayer from home. Yeah, sure, but like we also we also know that the people had a lot of fun doing multiplayer. Right next to each other, or just rooting for somebody to to get the high score, at, like at a, at a bar, and that it's that it's fun doing it in public with a with a beer on the side, and yeah, that's that, that that's kind of the whole point. So that that actually, I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised that that permeates then through through speed limits through through the game, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean, and it's like it makes make, makes me happy that like the the people think that because that means that we did get that feeling across then. That's. I um, just mentioned uh, mentioned earlier that um, there's an achievement for playing under thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. So, what's the guy who made it? What's the quick? <laughs> who's got the quickest time in game? What's your quickest time? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. But it's, it's probably less. But to be fair, like none of the, none of the office ones are none of the office times are fair because. I know exactly where everybody is in the first level. It's it's much harder now. It's much harder now with the the with the secret agent uh, uh, car- carriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it used to be it used to be a, a little easier, uh, but still, I mean, we've played it so many times. Like I, I don't know. Like it could. It, it, I think it was probably Alex Ravagna who did it first. Uh, but even then, they they probably did it faster. And then we said, yeah, okay, then thirty minutes is probably fine. Like for <laughs> for a whole playthrough, right? <laughs> I was going to say, that was going to be my next question, is how did you get to that 30-minute mark? We just like, well, just throw 30 minutes out there and see how achievable it is, or was it 
it's pretty much 25 I, minutes in the office so we'll put yeah, five minutes yeah. on yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's generally the the way we did it like yeah we did we didn't expect like 40 minutes or under times but the quickest i th i think i saw that, it, that it's 40 minutes yeah Damn. for the for, for the no death for the no death run yeah there's gonna be someone in a week so that has it done in like seven minutes or something in there <laughs> no there's a there's a uh, there are only like you can't really like you can't do it faster than you can actually move like in the in the first level uh it's uh I think uh, the plane level doesn't really have like you can accelerate between between planes and you, obviously the planes react to where, whether you slow down or, or speed up. But uh, I think the 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 enemies are much more. Uh, I mean, they they come into the to play when uh, when you kill them. So it's much more of a checkpoint system. Like okay, this then this then this, rather than you moving through through a level, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's a there's a practical limit. From from what I heard from Vanya, the, the most room like because because he's the only one that did I think I think the uh, the no death run for for in the office, um, the most room you have is uh, at the boss because the the boss can take up a lot of time and like if you time that that correctly that that one I think uh, cuts down most most of the time. I mean it's 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 just it's hard to explain the game i'm trying to explain it now but it's <laughs> brilliant and it's mental um but that boss battle is very reminiscent of um the 16-bit era boss battles you just get where you have to take an arm off and take another arm off yeah, and yeah. that kind of thing and expose a weak spot um but it somehow feels more epic well i'm glad <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's mean, a... compared to like the rest of the game you sort of like the I mean, the, the game forces you to go fast, like yeah, on yeah. The, and rewards you. Yeah, on the bike, you get yeah. hit by a car, and um, on the train, you've got the. Uh, did you when you're tweets? Did you call it the conga line? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I won't call it the spot team until I saw you tweet the video calling it the conga line. What's going on about the conga? It took me a while because because it's huge. Yeah, <laughs> but, you, but you only. I think you only see it at the end. Like uh, there was a. Yeah, the the idea was to have it like comically, comically large, but somebody somebody coined it at the office, and then ju that just stayed like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that that bit, it's like you, it's it's a fast paced game all the way through, and then it kind of like you, you're constantly moving, and, moving, and then it kind yeah, of just yeah, stops yeah. dead in this big epic fight. Like, well, we needed we needed to do something something for the end, right? So um, we need we need to have something that that you'll remember. And like if you play it a normal, you know that, that that's not the end of the game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, because we couldn't resist making the pun of of, of, of the last last level's uh, title. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, like we need we need to have something at the end. And like we already had had a few boss battles uh, before with the, with the killdozer and the and the helicopter. Um, so it needed like one of the staples was that it had to be bigger than the screen. Like that was, and uh, this this was this was both a problem and a, and like a challenge, obviously, uh, because we we played with the camera, so we wanted the camera to to move out, like to show it. Every, everything is we wanted everything cinematic in a way that it's like that it's framed cinematically, so that, that you would like you would feel cool doing it as well as like like feel cool for for getting it right, right. Um, but the camera ended up being a little too jarring when it was like moving back and forth and like we, we can do it. But, but still one of the staples was to make it just like bigger than, bigger than the screen, like for it to be like the most imposing thing that, that you, that you came up to. And then, then there was the, the whole ch chipping off the armor thing. Uh, and we couldn't resist the, the achievement for like missing the point. Like if you, if you, <laughs> if you peel off the, the, the layer of armor and skin, like from everything, but the, but the hard points that you actually need to destroy, like then you get the, the you miss the point. <laughs> point yeah. I, I, I felt quite insulted by that achievement. <laughs> was the first, <laughs> Sorry. Time, first time I got to the plane, first time I got to the boss, it was like, right. Where am I hitting? What am I shooting at here? Like, like, Ping, to like, be to be ping. fair, that that one is that one has the most uh, arcadey feel because because uh, the the hard points actually uh, blink when you when you shoot them. Yeah, <laughs> but that, yeah, I, I love that that little flash when the rockets come out. It flashes as you hit them. Um, yeah, yeah. My favorite bit when you said make it feel cinematic. I think my favorite bits about that fight is the um, the big cannon that comes out the middle. And when you when you swing, uh, well, I think it's two points when you swing between the three beams. Mm -hmm. you dodge it you feel brilliant but i think it's, i don't know if it's that or um 
barrel rolling around the rockets as they're coming in a circle. That was, that was my favorite, actually. In, in, in level nine, I think that, that came out most. And I think that's why, why people like that level the most, because uh, you can actually see the like all the control surfaces on the planes are actually moving like they would be if you were doing a barrel roll in a plane. Sadly, it's just one or two pixels in, in width, uh, but you could act if like if you if you zoom on it really 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 closely, you could actually see the player moving his hands uh, for the for the joystick. <laughs> yeah, um, well, and all the pilots like look back at you when you, when you're shooting at them, and like yes, so they're all they're all different as well, and all the all the brakes work as like as they should, uh, and yeah, and the this 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 barrel roll like turned out to be like the, the best thing ever i think As we, we was having a debate on um i was with steve we was having a debate about which system we prefer a player on mm-hmm. um, we, we <clears throat> excuse me i re- he reviewed the ps4 version mm-hmm. on the ps4 i reviewed the ps4 version played on a ps5 um mm-hmm. which works perfectly as well um i'm glad because we, uh, we had some problems like getting, you <laughs> no, know. It, it worked fine um but we were saying like uh I like the I, I like the idea of having it on my Switch because mm-hmm. um, I I don't really play the Switch that much, but well, I've not played it this year. Um, <laughs> I, I use it still early, still early. It, it's been I use it going to expos and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not being in a for the last year, but so my my fiance got Stardew Valley on it, and I think I've lost the Switch now. Um, <laughs> but I like the idea of having it on the Switch because it's a it's a quick game. It's a quick game, quick turn, and you can talk if you want. But I also don't like the idea of getting thrown off of the train for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose we should put a disclaimer for that. It's, uh, it's, it seems seems prudent. Like in retrospect, it seems prudent for for putting that on. Like I'll, I'll talk I'll talk to Iggy to, to to mention that on Twitter. Like don't don't get <laughs> don't thrown off in public. <laughs> yeah, oh, swear my, swearing may occur. Like my first stream, it was just especially on that car scene because I just. Now I know about the horn. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna listen for that. But I was just constantly hitting cars head on, like literally yeah. two seconds. Back. I do too. I I do too. Because like you, you want to you want to do it like uh, you want to do it cool. And sometimes you want to do you want to actually get get your enemies to get into to to smash into other cars. So you try yeah. to lead them on. So yeah, that's that's usually my 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 reason for for hitting other cars. <laughs> Yeah, I, I tend to try uh, hit them on the side so they bounce, they'll bounce into them, like make a barrier behind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I use constantly heard, but like, fuck, fuck, <laughs> just head on into something and just, no. It, so yeah, I, I can imagine getting kicked off of a train for playing that on the switch. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine that. Well, if if you do, make sure to record it. Like, let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just blame you for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll 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 take responsibility. That's that's fine. Like, it's it is it is hard, and we don't apologize for for making it hard. But on the subject on the subject of making it short, yeah, that's that, that it is like in retrospect, it's shorter than than we would have wanted. But on the other hand, people seem to seem to respond well to the to the to it actually being short. Mm-hmm. Um, it works. I don't. I don't think it's short. I mean, it's one of those. But I would like to be longer. But I think each level is about the right length. It doesn't feel too long. Or yeah, 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 yeah. You're constantly moving. Um, so that's that's kind of why that's kind of why they're so short. Because we started off with a with a baseline. So we started off actually. We just we use we straight up used metal slugs first level. Like it takes a minute to to go through it. Mm-hmm. And we said, okay, the train level is is one minute. Like the levels on the train have to be one minute at least long, uh, and so that that was the benchmark. But then then we started doing like two minutes for for the plane and started getting boring, because like we we already introduced this whole thing that that it constantly changes up and like we couldn't obviously you can't stop at the end right yeah um, so so actually we 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 cut down from like bits from the level just so that it, that it would just keep going like all the times. So yeah. yeah, to keep the, like pacing, pacing was the most important thing there to, to, to keep the illusion of the, of the speed going, right? So, and that, that eventually made it, made it a little shorter than, than I would have like hoped. But like I said, like people, people seem to like think that it's, that it's a good length and that's, that's good enough for me. And, and uh, we, we do keep going on about how, at least I do, about how uh, I'd rather make a game short than have it at stay, stay its welcome. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, yeah. That's, that's, he's finding that that fine balance in it of, of keep the player interested and not boring them. Um, and did did the length of the game um, 
affect the price point then? Because it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Very well priced. It's, it's seven ninety nine on the PlayStation Store. It's, it's a very reasonably yeah. priced game. Absolutely. So yeah. So we we always we always try to which we aimed we aimed for higher, right? But when we realized how long it was, then we, then we adjusted the price accordingly. So we did this for for all you can eat. Vape Escape was obviously free, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, we did it for Vape Escape, which was like uh, 199 when it, when it came out of uh, euros or dollars, I think. So it's even even less in pounds, I suppose. Uh, uh, which probably makes the joke at the end not work. <laughs> <laughs> it also it also doesn't work if, like if you got it on sale, but still. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so absolutely, the, the price was was definitely informed by the by the length of the game. So we we try to make uh, every time. Obviously, we try to make a longer game. So we try to we try to bring more of it, more of a game to 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 fruition. But definitely, yeah. So because because we realize that like if you have a game that's uh, even if it's short uh, and it's priced well, people won't complain as much if it's uh, if it's uh, like short and and still as expensive as something as something much larger. And then people get angry and refund and everything. And so, like, we'd we'd rather have a short game that's that's uh, that people are like happy that like for the time they spent in it. Again, it doesn't outstay its welcome. It does what it set out to do, like give you this experience for for the right amount of money. And yeah, it's definitely that's that, well, that's I, usually I, how we do it. Yeah. When when reviewing a game, um, part part of the reviewing is the price point and mm -hmm. value. Um, so I I tend to stick by I have a five pound rule. Um, mm -hmm. Which is there's not much in the UK you can do in an hour. For five. Five pounds. <laughs> you know, maybe get two pints, a McDonald's. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's gonna take you know, that's not gonna take an hour, you know. Um so if I pay fifty quid for a game and it's taking fifty hours to complete, that's that's a bargain. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. it's a pound an hour, it's brilliant. Um something like speed limit, you're paying eight pounds for it, you're gonna get more than an hour and a half out of it. Well, some are some aren't. So that's that's uh, that's a legitimate concern. Some people are. So some people are going to do like an hour and a half. And that's going to be it. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I completely agree. And uh, we had this we had this problem with with all you can eat because people were like, oh no, my, my limit is like a a dollar per hour because like if you buy a sixty sixty dollar game. And it's a, it's a huge epic that has sixty hours of content. Sure, that that makes sense, right? What else you're gonna but do? Like if you scale it down to, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, what are you gonna do for a dollar an hour outside of game? No, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we've, I've mentioned lockdown a bit, and um, mm -hmm. and not and no, not going to expos for the last year. Um, how did that change? How did that affect? Your promoting of speed limit then, because obviously I met you. At, I think it was Res for the first. Res, time. yeah, yeah. So you're not you can't go on the expos anymore. How did that? Happen? <laughs> well, uh, we we're very lucky that we have Lucia Pilic, our our PR manager in uh, in our team, because uh, she she just like it was. I don't think it was even March when when she did when she came out with like we have to be at all uh, all uh, online festivals like. Okay, <laughs> sure. Like, like all of them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, everyone. So, <laughs> yeah, it turned it turned out to be the 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 best decision ever. Like, like um, the uh, Dev Dev Booster conference uh, that we were actually nominated that we were in the finale in that that gave us the the largest spike of the year for for the wishlist that we had. Um, every every subsequent uh, like event that we had, we we every time we saw like a wish list j jump up, people people were responding uh, good good to it. Um, it's visually attractive. That's that's that usually helps. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it's it was um, uh, it turned out to, to be better when uh, after we finished the demo, the the official demo back in March. Because then we uh, then we offered the game on Discord, like we could you could uh, download the demo. Uh, the demo was continuously updated, so the one that you're playing now is not the same one that you play that you could uh, played in March of last year. So it was always it was continuously updated along with the game, so that we would always have the game as the demo. Uh, and on our Discord channel, we also started building this community back from back in March. Where you would uh, be able to play uh, other parts of the game, so we would have other levels 
standalone levels like we would we would be like uh could you could you please play this level now <laughs> we're like i mean you, you don't get a choice really this is this is the one that we're offering for you to play now <laughs> uh so that we could get get feedback on it and that's i think that that's part of it we try to be as transparent as possible uh, about the uh, about the uh uh, about the project obviously it, it turned out uh, like a good gamble to uh, to maintain the focus of what speed limit is so this ludicrous action that that's uh, that's continuously like getting crazier and crazier throughout the game and like speeds up and it's difficult and everything we had a lot of pushback on that but uh, i'm i think when obviously the reviews are going to be the final judges of that but uh i think we ironed out all the all the frustrations that were that were not intentional like yeah. for example we had this we had this shield guy in the first level that nobody could figure out like how to how to get through like and we we did iterations on it like like several times we had to uh, increase the distance from which you can actually shoot him um even now people like complain about the heavy guy with the machine with the minigun on on top of the True. on top of the yeah. train for example like the the that it's that it's like that it's difficult to, to pass them through like but the answer to most of the questions on how to go th go through something in a speed limit is just shoot <laughs> so yeah. i mean really, i i found on a couple of my runs now depending how badly because i i always miss the diagonal shots on the roof um so depending on how many people I've i do too very often yeah. yeah depending on how many people i've got chasing me on the roof i don't always shoot the shield guy straight away i'll kneel down and shoot him and bounce the bullets off his shield oh because if, if you kneel down um, and shoot yeah, him, the bullet bounces back yeah, we, um, through the roof. So if I've got a couple of people chasing I'm so, me, I'll, I'm so glad we kept that in. Yeah, I'll use that. I know it's not by accident. It's like you're going to help me, and then when they're dead, I'll pop up and. Take them out, <laughs> <you know>? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we kept that. We kept that in because yeah, that that was very satisfying when you figure it out. Yeah. You, you mentioned there the demo and stuff. I thought that was a stroke of genius putting the demo up on the on Steam and the. Uh, PlayStation Star and stuff, because as much as you're doing the online, oh yeah, that's online Xbox yeah. stuff. Speed them is very much a game you have to play. Um, you don't yeah, really get yeah. it until you play it. I think well, what, it's fine, but so I think the demo was a stroke of genius. Let people really see what what it was. Yeah, well, this, this that's just the thing with the demos. Like um, I was mentioning this to somebody the other day, like. That's how that's how we think it's done, because <laughs> again, uh, play play don't play don't show. I mean, it's great. Like if you have, obviously, people complain if you have a if you, if you have a trailer that's that doesn't have gameplay, that which is fair enough. I mean, I mean, we we've got we've come to the point where animation is so incredible. I mean, I, I remember you, you like uh, playing Tomb Raider two, uh, in like ninety, what was that eight nine? I have no idea anymore. Yeah. It was like last century, obviously last millennium even um and like you would you would, I, i'd play it to, to see the parts that were animated like 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 3d renderings were like really impressive to me like today that's i mean it's still impressive it still takes a lot of work there's a reason we don't do it <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a there's a very there's a very good reason why we don't do it it, it is labor expensive it is it, it's time consuming like like we might get to it i hope we get to it eventually but like for now retro games are fine um but yeah i mean obviously like it's it's so impressive right now but that's not the the thing you play that that's not the that's not the actual game anymore like if you if you make too much of a and i mean don't get me wrong i love uncharted 4 like then again uncharted 4 has a good balance between cinematics and the and the action and the exploration and everything and that those are those are their pillars of, of how they make a game and like they they perfected that that formula over a time right but the, like you should I don't think you should ever like judge. Well, people are going to be either drawn to to the art style or not. I think that's that's and and maybe maybe to the genre. And uh, this was a really this was really difficult to to portray in the in the first uh, trailer when when we didn't have the transitions, right? So that was that was one one of the jumping off points. But after that, I definitely agree with you. You have to play it to know what the game is like. Uh, but I mean, like I said, the games have this. You need to you need to play it and not show it. Uh, vibe, like right? there's a there is. I mean, there is no way you can you can know how a car feels like in a in a racing game unless you play the game. Yeah, like it could be very arcadey or it could be a complete on a hundred percent simulation of a of a racing a racing car. And you there was there's like from a good from a good player 
there is no way like if if the if it's recorded by a good player that that knows how to play both of those kinds of games really well there is no way to tell yeah yeah so it's um and and like i said we we grew up on on a on games that were that came on CDs, like not even Blu-rays, like, like they, they came on. You're making me feel old. <laughs> I'm old too. That's my, my that's first fine. computer. The games came on a cassette. <laughs> but my well, first computer. But even so, but, but that's even that's even a better that's even a better uh, um, example because uh, like shareware was a thing for a really long time. Mm-hmm. You would you would play a third of a game before you would you would have to pay for it. Yeah. So. And speed limit is a well. It's not a third. It's like a fifth ish, I think. So you get you get the the first three levels of the, of the game uh, for free, right, for the demo. And I think the, the obviously we we I I didn't personally we didn't want to start on the second one because uh, I wanted to to get you into the game with the with the story. The, what's <laughs> what's in in it of a like what. For for what the story is worth, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's deep uh, and we need all. to show the transitions. So that that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't catch that. The, yeah. I was cut saying, out. You're, you're sorry. I'll just make a joke about the star. So speed speed limit is deeply steamed in law. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It is. There's a, there's a whole. There's a whole. Uh, I mean, we already have a Wikipedia page uh, about it, and uh, there's a there's a whole story behind the the nine millimeter MacGuffin that you that you get in, at the start of the story, uh, <laughs> and if there there are a few clues and the uh, and jokes in the gallery as well, like if you if you see some of the early some of the early art in the in the gallery, there's like uh, there's a, a train line name hidden in in uh, Japanese uh, letters. Never gonna figure that out. I'll never find that. I'll figure that out. I'll read Japanese. <laughs> I'll leave that. But somebody will. Time. But so that's, someone will that's, figure it out. Yeah. That's that. That's kind of that's that's always my point with the, with the things that that we like hide inside. It doesn't matter that that uh, that somebody doesn't get it. The the basic the basic game should be fun. Like the 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 shooting, the driving, the riding, the the flying should be fun. Everything else is just gravy. And it's and it's like for people who, who actually catch the catch the the little things like not everybody is going to figure out that the, the helicopter in the in the, four, in the third level is the helicopter that you that you just that you're going to fly uh, like several levels from now. Not everybody is going to catch that you pass yourself by on the on on the exact middle of the game. Um, yeah, the, the crossroads. Yeah, yes, I noticed that. Yes, I did notice that because I, I kept Which trying to like, slow down and catch myself or shoot it and. <laughs> yeah, you, you get an achievement for shooting yourself twice. <laughs> we were, oh yeah, that that one was uh, I, we nearly did did an evil thing there because uh, because the the when you when you first see yourself, you see your future self pass by, and so if you shoot yourself realistically, you should you should die when you finish the next level. So just shoot yourself, and the next level you pass, you get shot by yourself. Yeah, but that would be very that we tried that, but it would be very annoying to do that. So, so no, you actually die immediately if you no, you die immediately if you shoot yourself, uh, if you shoot your past self. Yeah, you die immediately. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be funny. That'd be funny though. Um, but so kinda... we're not we're not completely evil. <laughs> no, not not completely. Just just twisted. <laughs> Um, is there? Like, so I think I've kept you quite a while here now. But is, is there anything I've not mentioned that you'd it's like fine. to? Or... Oh, I probably forgot by now. If like if there, if there was anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, this is... I don't know. Like uh, try. Yeah. I'm going to put all the links to the game, mm-hmm. to, to Steam Store, and everything else in here because everyone should go buy it. Um, and this this has been a little. Bit... Well, I think everybody. Sorry, mm-hmm. go on. No, no, go on. But uh, I think uh, like everybody should definitely uh, try the demo and see see if it's for them. That's uh, that's really? that's what it's for. I mean, that's it's no excuse for free, is there? <laughs> <laughs> it's for free. You've got no excuse not to try it. Um, but, yeah. Thank you, thank you for the demo. It's been a bit different to. Uh, You're welcome anytime. It's been a bit different to me being hung over, shouting at people, walking in front of the camera. <laughs> Like the last time we spoke. <laughs> well, I mean, we could still at least do half of that, but you you needed to like mention it in in, in advance. <laughs> um, but no, thank you very much, man. Thank you for your time and congratulations on the release. Thank you. 
Um, I look forward to seeing it topping all the charts. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but it, it would be it would be really interesting if that did happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you. This this was very interesting. Right. Cheers. Right.